Hi everyone, welcome. As you can see, I've got a nice collection of cantaloupe here, and it includes some of the inside of the cantaloupe too, not just the cantaloupe rinds. Because I guess this cantaloupe was not as good as it could be. And it was placed in my freezer to be um, on standby as a worm food at some point in the future. And you can see there's little pools of moisture puddling up because this stuff has now been allowed to thaw as well. But I do find that keeping stuff in the freezer is a terrific way to preserve it until such a time that I'm ready to give it to the worm bins. The stuff that I've got here in this spray bottle is a, a solution of these mosquito dunks. A lot of you might be familiar with what this is. If you've got like a pond or a bird feeder or any sort of standing water on your property, you too might use that stuff to try to control outbreaks of flies on your property not flies mosquitoes but it leads me to the topic of fruit flies specifically and gnats which that stuff also seems to have an effect on controlling or at least I've found it to work pretty good in the past so here and there I've been noticing hello hello testing one two three huh I don't know what's going on with my camera. It complained about there being an SD card error, so I'm not sure where I got cut off exactly, but um, I was in the middle of applying some of this BTI solution, Mosquito Dunks solution, to the worm bin. I can't remember if I mentioned why I like to do it in the beginning because the, I guess because if there are fruit flies trying to camp out in here, they will have made themselves at home on the surface and since that's what I'm trying to target and apply this stuff to I'm just sprinkling it out onto the surface to take care of them there so I've, re I've removed the top covering paper as well as the feeding zone indicator beneath it and I've got replacement feeding zone indicators so when we feed we can apply the the old feeding zone indicators into the feeding area as supplementary bedding and I'm thinking we can even use some of this leafy matter as supplementary bedding down in the feeding area too since I've got my box of leaves completely replenished I was just outside to get some more one thing I did over here within the leafy matter again I can't remember if I mentioned it or not earlier I got distracted but this green stuff was some corn shreds that I placed in here amongst the leaves thinking that it might draw some worm action and it seems like it's just sort of sat out here and became moldy <laughs> I guess the the fact that it does have a tendency to get moldy was the main reason that I decided I was going to store that stuff in my freezer so let's um let's get to work feeding these little guys it's been 11 days now since we last checked in on these systems, they got a variety of kind of kind of kitchen scraps that consisted of soup greens, and there were a couple larger pieces of parsnip that I chopped up into chunks, which I wasn't sure if they would have been eaten yet by now. I could even kind of sense the scent of the the uh, the soup greens. There's just something I don't know what it is, but like I remember whenever my Mom or grandmother was preparing soup when I was a kid. There was always that really pleasant smell. Even before the stuff went into the stew and started cooking of these carrots and parsnips and stuff like that, celery, whatever. And I think this might be a, a chunk of the parsnip. I actually came down here with an entire large parsnip that needed to be hacked up into small pieces so that I can put some of it into each of these systems as part of their feeding. Oh boy. I wonder what's drawing the attention of these little guys. I wonder if it might be parsnip. Could very well be. Look at all these guys. I've got a feeling once they peel away, we're going to see some sort of a delicious food item that's really causing a stir.
I tell you, these little guys, they're quick to try to scurry out of the bright lights and they leave behind the material that they were inhabiting, all these castings. They'll even leave behind this delicious morsel of food that they were working on. And you would assume that a large number of them would have dropped through my fingers down into the bedding, but the majority of them are still right here in my hand. Only maybe two or three of them fell. So if we flip this thing over, they're all right there. <laughs> and now we can actually give them a place to dig down into and get out of the bright lights. So it does seem like they really enjoyed that large chunk of parsnip that was left over. And I know there were, you know, a good number of those large chunks in here. So we might bump into similar little worm parties hanging out down here because they evidently couldn't really finish off those chunks of veggie in those 11 days that we've given them since the last check-in. And regardless of the fact that there's still leftovers in here, I'm okay with giving them some more food. And the food that they're getting today is another item that's likely to be a big hit, all that delicious cantaloupe. Not to mention some of it just being the cantaloupe fruit itself, not just the peel or the skin or the rind or whatever. A lot of these things that you're seeing over here, these large chunks of white and yellow material, those are all the napkins that had been placed in beneath the feeding zone last time as the foundation for the feeding. There's like supplementary bedding, once it all breaks down, that too will just be used by the worms as bedding material and then eventually get eaten as a food product. So we've opened up a nice spot to place in all that yummy cantaloupe and coffee that I got for them too and worm chow so there's other things to give them besides the cantaloupe I showed earlier. Let's see how the wormies in this system are doing. Somehow the material in this system feels a little bit lighter, fluffier, perhaps drier. That might be the reason it feels that way. Maybe because this system is 60 days older than the other bin. The other bin, the younger bin, I've got information about these systems. So why don't I share it really quick before I forget. These systems have now reached 196 days of age, the system we're checking in on right here. The younger bin, 136. So the 60 days difference in their ages is quite visible just by the fineness of the material. If you ask me, this stuff looks really nice. Just nice smooth castings almost everywhere. Very few chunks of leftover debris or, you know, uncomposted bits of food or bedding versus what you see over there in the younger bin where it does seem like they've got a little bit more work to do to get to that same stage as we see here in the older bin. I do believe that at some point in the near future we'll break away from having these systems operate as buddy bins and then start to drive this older system towards harvest and completion and migrating the worms out and getting them cut loose in a new home giving the younger system a little bit more time to get to that point. Because even like we noted last time in the check-in 11 days ago when we fed these guys last, the capacity of this system is definitely getting close to the limit. And that just doesn't mean that it's already full to the rim, it's just full enough that it feels like it's encroaching on, my, uh, on the space that I like having available to myself to work. Because as you can see I like to till up the material around the feeding area. I like to excavate a pretty good sized hole into which the foods can be placed. So uh, at some point I like to just bring a system to an end for whatever reason and oftentimes it is based on the fact that I feel like they've kind of run out of room and it's time to grab their lovely castings from them and move them into a new space to start making more for us. So I've got my leaves. I thought that maybe we would reuse some of these old leaves and then we'll scatter fresh leaves across the top surface. So why don't we do that? I'll just reach in over here and grab some of the stuff that we shoved aside in the beginning to become the foundation for today's feeding. These leaves have already got a nice um, inoculation of all kinds of microorganisms living in it, all kinds of fungus and bacteria and all the things that give the foods a nice jump start 
so that the worms can move in later and start eating it. And these things right here that I'm moving aside, these are corn cobs. We'll return those to the feeding area as well. And there's this big mound of worms still huddling together <laughs> after we took the time to examine them a little bit. I don't know if they got stranded on this piece of paper and couldn't really burrow back down into the bedding because of that, so I just liberated them from what was keeping them from getting out of view. And let's see if we can help these chunks of corn along a little bit by at least busting them in half. Perhaps at a later stage they'll crack apart just like this one did. And by breaking things into smaller particle size or at least smaller chunks if possible. This one too shattered quite nicely. It gives worms the ability to approach more of it from more angles and exposes more of the material to more worm action throughout. So the, the two corn cob bits that I found here in the older bin just shattered. Both of them went to pieces one, two, three, which is kind of cool. All right, let's give them their yummy meal here. It is quite a bit, so I'm going to have to reach around the edges of the bin, around the outer limits to try to round up some nice material that we could use to cover up the feeding zone. We'll just fluff up all the material in the bin so that there's um, enough stuff to cover thoroughly. I wouldn't want the scent of any of this yummy food to potentially attract any flying insects that they would want to make themselves at home down in here. Oh man, we've got a good bit of stuff here and a lot of it has a good bit of meaty goodness on it still, not to mention all this meaty goodness here. This stuff really got mushy by having been out here in the um... Oh, did we shortchange the younger system by not giving it one of these ends? Let's be fair. Let's give them both an equal shot at having some of this delicious food. And I got this little bit of moisture here. Those leaves that we placed in beneath the feeding were sort of dry, so this will help moisten that stuff. And before we forget, a little bit more supplementary bedding we could drop in here. The old feeding zone indicator, these old coffee filters that we're going to be replacing at the end with new ones. And last but not least, I got those two days worth of coffee that we hinted at a moment ago. So the coffee will go in and we'll spice it up with a little bit of worm chow, I think. And then we can start covering up this nice ample feeding that these guys got. I'll tell you, if we come back in here in another 11 days like we did today, we're probably going to see a wicked worm party going on here. Before we um, put in the worm chow, let's also give them a little bit of grit in case they need it or want it. And then the, the worm chow I like to sprinkle in on top of the coffee just to give the coffee a little bit extra flavor, I guess, or whatever. It's not just a big pile of the same old stuff, but it's got a little bit of this and that mixed into it because my worm chow is just a mishmash of this and that whether it's bird seed or pepper seeds or cantaloupe seeds or old wheats or grains or flowers or pancake mix whatever I've got laying around makes its way into my worm chow and then um, and then that's just another way to get rid of stuff that would otherwise end up going in the trash or whatever so I do definitely enjoy being able to responsibly get rid of household waste without just chucking it in the trash. I definitely like being able to give large amounts of the stuff that is trash around here to the worms. And then in exchange I'm given this really beautiful castings material back which goes to my plants and then they become very appreciative so I think every everyone benefits in the in the long run. Worms are benefiting from my refuse. The environment benefits by me not contributing to it by piling more stuff into the landfill. Um, 
And then my garden. At the very end of the game, the garden gets all this lovely vermicompost to feed my plants, to nourish my plants, give them a lovely medium to grow in. So yeah, things look really nice here. I'm blending in all kinds of leafy matter into the into the bedding throughout. Usually in the older bin I start to not want to add stuff like leaves because the leaves bring with them the stems and then those stems take a while to break down so perhaps we'll start becoming a little bit selective on what sort of things we drop into at least the older system here to try to um, get it geared up for harvest at some point in the near future but for now I'm just treating it look like any other bin with with it being less than 200 days of age it's only a few days away from hitting 200 days of age but at you know 196 days of age I do still see this as being in service for another couple months or so getting a few more feedings during which time there will be um, ample opportunity for any sort of slow composting tougher materials that are in here such as leaf stems to gradually get worked down by the worms and then we can um, and then we can have some nice fine material all right well let's let's deliver on what we promised we're going to give each system a refresh on leaves I had I had some leaves that I collected last autumn and I had this idea of actually dumping them on the ground which I did <laughs> it wasn't just an idea I did this uh, about a week or two ago I dumped all those leaves that had been sitting around all summer drying onto the ground then I used my leaf vac which also kind of shreds the stuff up in the process of collecting it and bagging it so that's why all this stuff is such tiny particle size because it not only got collected once by my leaf vac last autumn but I ran it through the machine a second time further chopping it up fragmenting it into little tiny bits and I really like its consistency it's all tiny particle size hardly anything large like this I mean a few things sneak by the blade once in a while but for the most part stuff is chopped up really nice and fine and I think that's really cool so back on with our feeding zone indicators but these are nice fresh new ones replacing the old ones and these top covering papers are now in service for probably three or four iterations of feedings at this point a lot of times when we use just a sheet of newspaper out here to cover up the stuff gets gobbled up by the worms because it's so thin and lightweight material but this is actually a double bag partially brown bag on the bottom a little bit of white bag laminated on the outside some sugar bag as you can see right here and it's tough it's holding up great it's been in here for quite some time now and I got a feeling it's going to continue to last as our top covering paper for a little while longer maybe at some point we'll decide to swap it out with something new and then use that as bedding in our feeding zone as well but I am curious to see how long it lasts without um, any interference other than the worms working it down so we'll see how much time it takes for it to break down I got a feeling it has quite a few more feedings and perhaps a, another month or two before it's gone but who knows I could be completely wrong <laughs> all right everyone that's it for the check-in with this really nice batch of red wigglers doing really good in both systems hopefully they'll appreciate that cantaloupe we just gave them I think they will all right everyone thanks so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go that's always really appreciated and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel that's very much appreciated as well all right everyone have a great day thanks for watching bye now